Chapter 15 Just as dawn broke in the wasteland fortress, <clears throat> the Greglin were arguing in the bottommost part of the fortress about the door on the floor. Open door now I will, said one banging a large metal mace on it. Another threw up and grabbed the mace, saying, Guarded by magic, Kriev. They were all in awe. A fiery wind could be felt through the door's tiny crack. Darkened with his small black beard and young-looking face, his frightfully large frame making a shadow against the twisting wall. <coughs> he yelled to the Greklin, Be it that you are skulking about down here. I suppose there is a reason. The Greklin smirk at him raising their weapons one simply states door and puts his palm on it darken makes his way to the door on the floor marked with all sorts of sigils and markings he looks and says i know this word eberun and the markings fling up in a magic projection and move about as a combination to a lot wood and the door slides open under the stone revealing a stairway going down it is an amazing discovery the Greklin asks, in form of Sidian? Darkin puts his hand up and says, No, we shall investigate on our own. Darkin and a single file of countless Greklin go down the singular stairs. Darkin causes his staff to catch on fire on top, making a torch. As they travel to get, it gets darker and warmer. They reach a giant room carved out of the rock, it being lit by congealed lava glowing from the stone. Everywhere there is books and what appears to be signs of someone living here. Before Durkin's eyes can adjust, all of the Greklin begin to kneel and throw down their weapons before a massive mural of Kriya of the Dwarf King. <coughs> Fools, Durkin utters, almost, almost whispering, with an angry look pacing about. The Greklin cheer out of control when they see Kriya sitting away on a throne made of stone and animal hide. Darkin cannot believe it. It is truly the king of dwarves. He readies his staff and launches a vile energy projectile at the king. But before it can reach him, on the other side of this massive place, the dwarf king magically carves a large piece of rock from within the stone and it knocks Darkin out. Darkin's staff is the most powerful witch staff of all time, but Lancaster has made it where he cannot channel true magic. He is left to use his ever so useful staff. The last thing Darkin sees is the Greklin cheering, raising their weapons in unison, then nothing. In his hand, as he is passed out, an amulet falls from his limp, limp hands onto the hard stone floor. It is the amulet of Sora. He stole it from the bird that was supposed to take it elsewhere. Kriev sees it and whispers to himself amongst the loud cheering and banging of sharp Greklin maces and shields. Sora? Sora's old amulet, but how? He slowly throws his cape to one of his shoulders and goes toward the amulet. He picks it up and puts it on, saying, You have been avenged, Sora, my dear friend. Kriev points out to the Greklin a cage to the far left beside a table littered with all sorts of herbs and gems. It is a magical dampening cage. The runes will make this human's magic useless. Throw him in. Kriev says confidently to every Greklin in his dwelling. Two Greklin pick Darkin up by his arms and slide him into the cage, but do not shut the or lock the do lock its door. Allow me, says Kriev. He focuses his palm on the cage and walks up toward it, for forcing Darkin's dirty brown robe into the cage as it hung out a bit. Nathuzalagund Uvun. Nathuzal Megund Uvund, the king utters and chants as the glow of the lava rocks intensifies. He chants until the door slams shut and starts to glow with a golden light around its bars. Now Darkin is a prisoner of the long thought lost of the long thought lost king of dwarves. Kriev despises him for it is Darkin who plotted to kill Sora, the first Felgen and friend of Kriev in times past. The Greklin begin to wail and moan just a bit, and one of, the, one of them says, Kriev, heal us? Looking sad, 
and worn out. Kareb asks, What has been done to you, my brothers? Another steps forward and salutes his arm and hand to his shoulders, saying, Necromancer, above us. Kareb looks serious and asks, Now? They are in Ajara Kareb Morvond? Kareb steps aside to himself, then walks to the table by the cage and opens a grate built into the wall taking out a handful of small round white cut gems pass these around he utters th he utters thunderously through the deep they will stave off any necromancy and fix your minds sleep now and when you wake the monster will have fallen off your faces skin and your speaking will be less slurred Kriev says as he stands around bags full of gems telling them all to keep them on their person at all times Obsidian is already gone yet again. His ability, to, his ability to see the future always keeps him one step behind. But what is the future beyond choices? The magic door prevented him from seeing everything, but he saw enough to know he had to leave. Only bits and pieces of what took place after escape. Dwarf and magic is very powerful, namely the kind of magic that is opposed to other magic. The dwarves were asexual male mages, miners, and warriors who believed magic existed in more pure forms under places. The paragons of their race were, however, the warriors. In dwarf culture, it was a great honor and undeniable urge to protect the deep places of the world. <coughs> to face down the evil red dragons of the lava streams deep within the world was creed. In fact, it was a rite of passage to slay one for they could not call themselves a warrior among other dwarves without defeating one in battle. It was not small. It was no small feat for red dragons or the most fearsome of all the dragons. It was Kriev's asexual dwarven essence that created Sora's amulet. The amulets, the elves understood this, but did not make it public to honor the forgotten dwarves. The elves and dwarves are the ones who saved the world twice from orc uprising. It was not their intent to curse others. Such powers was not meant to be enchanted. The amulet was created to thwart Darkin and Fomog's plot to bring Fomog to the surface. Darkin had always been an extremely powerful mage, but a mage nonetheless. Using the powers of the dwarves, Sora could thwart any mage, so she did. It was too late, however, as Fomog was cast into the Forbidden Realm and became Movak and in a rage Darkin slew her. The amulet could not be finished in time. It was, however, a gift from Kriev, mostly. Now the amulet is safe in Kriev, is safe with Kriev yet again. He now wears the Tempesta, a robe which makes the wearer immortal. It is directly linked to the Tempest. The robe has kept him alive for so long now. Truly mighty, he has been feeding on the meat of red dragons in the deep world to, to stay alive, for the robe is not all-powerful. Certain streams from the surface world make their way down to the deep world. Also, though it is muddied and mucky by then, he uses dwarven magic to cleanse the water, just as the dwarves of old did. Kriev now has the amulet that could unite the Felgen against even the orcs. Another day passes, and yet another victory is sung for the forgotten.